About 3,000 of you subscribe, but only about 200 are getting notifications. So click the bell and click all. Hello, lovelies. Unlike a lot of people, sadly, I'd say, uh, I try to operate on a basis of principle. I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything. It's it's not necessarily always the best way to go about things if you want to get on with people, but uh, I think it's an undervalued way of interacting with the world and interacting with, with other people, you know? I, I try not to make emotional or tribal decisions while at the same time acknowledging that, you know, social interaction is important where you stand with your with your friends and your monkey sphere yeah that, that 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 matters and that emotions are an important aspect to, of human health and so on but what I mean is I, I try not to let it rule me and for someone with crushing depression and anxiety then that, that's not that's not easy <laughs> there's definitely been something of a, a pole flip um, with the US Supreme Court turning turbo Hitler uh, just recently in that in increasingly I find my fights are back on old familiar and more comfortable ground <laughs> in that I find myself arguing slightly less with the, with the pseudo left uh, but a great deal more with the the right, with conservatives and with um, pseudo libertarians, I, I call the modern pseudo left pseudo left because they seem to have forgotten about most left wing principles, in, in in particular left wing economics. Um, but they wear left leftism like like a skin suit, while contradicting you know the the main pillars of left wing thought. You know they are anti-egalitarian they seem to want a hierarchy they just want an inverted hierarchy um, yeah th the, these are these are things that are entirely countervailing to, to left-wing philosophy and, and, and political ideas but similarly I'm, I'm gonna start calling people on on the right quite often uh, pseudo libertarians because all their claims about being for for freedom and no interference and so on are contradicted by their rhetoric and their actions and the kinds of political developments that they're celebrating like removing the right to an abortion from a, a swathe of the American population doesn't increase anybody's freedom you know when you had choice if you didn't want an abortion you didn't have to get one and if you did want an abortion you could get one right that's obviously a lot more freedom than no you're not allowed ever under any circumstances which is pretty close to the case in some of the states removing the necessity for you to be read your rights when you're arrested doesn't increase people's freedom because it lessens people's awareness of their freedoms and their rights gutting environmental protections doesn't increase people's freedom because well, you can't exercise any freedom when you're dead, can you? And uh, the climate emergency is kind of pressing. Allowing coercive religious practices in state-operated parts of society, like, oh, say, schools, that doesn't increase people's freedom. That reduces it because it becomes coercive. If you don't join in, you might become socially ostracised and so on. It, it de facto creates a situation that violates the establishment clause and yet the supreme court has uh, has ruled in favor of that allowing crazy people to go armed everywhere doesn't increase freedom but going armed into a, a conflict or being mugged or whatever else increases your chance of being hurt and just having a gun around increases the chance that you're going to hurt yourself or someone you care about so statistically that's less freedom 
you know, there's, there's freedom from and there's freedom to and the two are in tension with one another. You know, your freedom to have a gun takes away from other people's freedom from being randomly shot by a psychopath. Your freedom to not have your vaccination takes away from potentially thousands of other people's freedom from being infected, you know, which violates their bodily autonomy. So you, you've got to consider the whole context. Now, if you have a guiding principle behind something, it might be wrong, but at least you're going to be consistent. <laughs> you're going to be fairly rock solid and you're going to minimize the chances of hypocrisy. To me, uh, a, a core belief that I have is in the value of free expression. I, I think all else devolves from that, being able to argue for and present cases for other things that you think are important or good or whatever else. Without that ability, you can't. Be, anything else is a non-starter. And I think if you do believe in the value of freedom of expression, that means you have to stick up for people who you don't agree with, people who you'd you disagree with people whose viewpoints you find repugnant or disgusting or even dangerous up to a point short of the harm principle. Censorship doesn't suddenly become okay because it's being enacted against your political or social enemies. Fiscal, corporate and capitalist censorship doesn't magically not become censorship because it's inflicted on people on the right or with views that you consider to be bigoted. And equally, it, it doesn't suddenly become okay the other way around when it's banning LGBT expression or trying to criminalize drag story hour. Yeah, it, it doesn't magically transfer to being uh, okay. That principle doesn't go out the window just because seeing a man in a dress makes your pee pee confused and you don't like it. You can't claim to be for freedom and demand that women be reduced to Benetley lax axotl tanks from Dune, right? You can't claim to be anti-racist and spew endless hate against white people. And it's not okay to spew racist hate against black people just because other people are being racist to white people. A lot of motherfuckers on both sides are really mask off lately, and, and not just in America, there seems to have emboldened wingnuts around the world on both sides to be really obviously awful. <laughs> when we've had crises like this in history, some people, some countries seem to have in the past risen to the challenge by liberalizing and investing in the common good. I see precious little of that today. Um, this might strike people as crazy who think that the, the left is somehow running rampant, but there is no meaningful left-wing movement that can counter the, the worrisome shift to the hard right. You know, where, where's the equivalent project to the NHS? Where's the drive for internationalism, cooperation and communitarianism rather than insular nationalism, xenophobia, blame-shifting and, and beating the drums of war? Yeah, get some principles, apply them universally, and at the very least, you won't be a hypocrite quite as much. Nobody's perfect, right? Everyone makes mistakes, but you could at least try. As James Raji said in one of his videos recently, congratulations, it's your turn to be the arsehole. Um, but both sides, not left and right really in any meaningful application of the term, just different breeds of cunt. Yeah, they're all being assholes at the same time. So we're getting it from both sides. The worst of all possible worlds. We're getting it from pseudo left and pseudo right when it comes to social interactions, communication, expression, all of that. And while you're busy calling everyone under the sun a, a fascist or a groomer or a cuck or whatever the, the, the term of the day is, meanwhile, the obscenely wealthy kleptocratic class continues to get away with absolute murder, despite our society being as fractured and unequal now as it was before the French Revolution or during the rise of totalitarianism in the 20th century. So maybe, just maybe, get some principles, figure out what they are, 
and try not to be a cunt. Zang. Imagination is a deeply personal game about depression and its effects, intended to help people with invisible illnesses to broach the subject and explore it in a way in which they can have power over it. Imagination is set after the fall of mainland Britain to a strange reality breakdown. The barriers between imagination and reality, dreams and nightmares have shattered and strange things dreamed up by people caught in the event team across the land. Only those whose minds are already broken can hope to cope with exploring, understanding and combating this strangeness for the sake of the huddled refugees that sit and wait and watch from the smaller islands around the coast. A game of mental illness and art using the description system as used in Neverwhere. This game is available free, so please promote, download, host and spread as far and wide as you can. Available at post-mort.com and drive through RPG.